Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, everyone, for uh, attending. Um, we're very uh, happy to uh, to have uh, Claudio Aguilo here. We invited uh, him for, for, for a number of reasons. Uh, he's, he's a very interesting uh, architect and, uh, and uh, someone that we uh, we think it's really uh, an interesting for you to, to know in case you didn't know. But also more specifically, uh, because he's uh, one of the practitioners that we think has worked more uh, seriously from a design point of view on questions relating uh, architecture to, to, uh, to, to, to environmental reasons. Uh, that is, as you know, uh, Barcelona Unit, we're working this year on uh, the concept of uh, an urban climate refuge. So how can um, architecture specifically, I mean, the, the, the very built mass of architecture um, and also uh, things having to do with uh, planning and public space, how can it uh, become a climate refuge in, in the current situation of uh, climate emergency. So Claudia's uh, work uh, hinges uh, quite a lot uh, on this issue, basically working with uh, uh, intermediate spaces and with uh, the idea of uh, architecture and the architectural uh, mass as uh, a potential, uh, let's say, player in a climate refuge uh, paradigm, if you will. So we're very interested in in, in hearing what Claudia has to say. We, we're interested, uh, we think that well beyond, let's say the more strictly technical approaches to uh, uh, environmental aspects in architecture. So, you know, having to do with insulation and uh, whatnot, there is a very important question on how this uh, architecture affects the urban setting and public space um, in order to generate uh, a better living condition uh, in, in cities uh, regarding uh, this core idea of climate refuge. So that's the main reason why we invited um, Claudi. Now, very quickly, I will uh, introduce Claudi. Claudi Aguilo, he's an architect um, and studied at, uh, at SAP with a V, so from uh, Vallès, and he graduated in 2001. From 2002 to 2006, he uh, was a researcher, had a research grant at uh, the same university, Department of Architectural Technology, where he still teaches. Since 2016, he uh, is a teacher in uh, the master's degree in a master's degree in, in the same uh, architecture school. He has also taught nationally and internationally at various universities, uh, such as uh, uh, SAP with B uh, in Barcelona, La Salle, uh, UIC, all of these in Barcelona, also uh, University of Illinois in Chicago, the Umeå School of Architecture uh, in Sweden, Kau Leuven in Belgium. Uh, and uh, Erasmus Netsif program workshops in Norway, Ireland, Denmark, Belgium, Sweden, Poland, and Catalonia. He was a visiting professor at the Rural Studio at Auburn University School of Architecture in Alabama, in the United States, and he was assistant professor of architecture at the Institute of uh, Architecture, BIARC, between 2010 and 2011 in Barcelona. Since 2000, uh, 2000 just before he graduated, actually, he's co founder of the architectural office uh, Data I. They have won several competitions in architecture and landscape, uh, and many uh, awards have been received, including uh, the FAD Awards in 2017, uh, FAD Award in 2017, sorry, a uh, public opinion uh, prize of FAD Award in 2007-2015. Uh, um, list in, in other uh, FAD Awards, 2009-2013, uh, uh, selection of Young Spanish Architects 2008, selection uh, or awards of uh, Young Catalan Architects 2012, SAI Awards of the Best Concrete Building in 2011, uh, yeah. Cecilia Innovation Award 2012, finalist for Spanish Architecture Biennale in 2013 and, and 16, and Executive Prize of the Arch Marathon Awards in Milano. Also the very important Catalonia Construcció Awards 2015, which, which awards uh, the, the prize for the best uh, building in terms of uh, building processes in Catalonia. So as you can see, there's lots of, uh, of uh, laurels wreath, uh, which are very uh, interesting. Also, what we think it's uh, even more interesting is the quality of uh, Claudi's um, architecture in his office and how it relates to this very pressing question of uh, how can we as architects or designers um, deal with uh, climate emergencies. So without further ado, thanks a lot, Claudi, for being here, for accepting our invitation, and we're looking very much forward to hearing you. Thank you, Roger and Pedro, for the invitation. Um, and I'm gonna and thank you, Lasalle, as well, uh, for the invitation. And I'm gonna start a lecture. Um, 
Compartir pantalla. No. ¿Funciona? Sí, perfecta. Sí, sí. Uh, ahora es de hacer pantalla completa. ¿Así? Ahora, perfecta, ya está. Muchas gracias. Ok. So, uh, first of all, um, I had to apologize a little bit about my English because it's a little bit rusted. It's uh, for a while that I haven't been speaking English. But, uh, well, I'm going to try to do my best. Um, um, I'm also sorry because I'm, I'm going to focus only on, on housing projects, um, even though we have a few uh, landscape projects or projects that uh, focus on public space. But um, we understood the invitation based on, on buildings. I don't know why, but um, or on housing projects. So, so that's, that's the, the choice that we, we took. Um, even though, even though, uh, if I don't remember wrong, um, before summer we we did another lecture similar to this one in in Barcelona, based on um, based on the and the, the our, our housing projects. Um, so so that's why that's why this this one we changed it a little bit and we focus on the. On the project that uh, that we have uh, in process right now, um, so we are gonna try to do something that we've never done, that is sharing with you uh, what we are right now uh, designing. So um, more or less at the at the end of this um, lecture, I'm gonna be showing the drawings that right now we are just drawing and. For the last uh, build, um, competition that we won, that was a project in in Mallorca. So you will see that some of them have gonna have mistakes and and, and, and marks because because we are still working on on some details. Um, so let's see let's see if it works. Um, that's why we we call that that the lecture in process. Uh, because we've been we've been recently a little bit lucky in some competitions, uh, and we have a few projects in, um, on housing going on. Some of them, some of them, uh, we are designing them, and some of them we are starting the construction. And we will share that with you. Um, the first project is a project that is for me very difficult to. To not explain it because it's a project that we we like a lot. Um, I'm going to start all all these. In, in, I'm going to introduce all the projects with with another project um, of architecture. Um, this uh, Siglung Hallen is a it's, it was a, a a very important experience of myself um, because I I visited I visit this 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 project um, a few years ago. Uh, Around, around six years ago, or something like that, and it was a it was a, an amazing experience for me. One of the best architectural architectonical experiences that I've ever had in my life. Um, it was it was very impressive. Um, the architecture, the social conditions, the environment, and the the level of ins the 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 level of uh, I mean, or see like the the level of um, insulation. Sí, pero I mean, I mean, del context, or see the. Oh no! Yeah, well, that, digam na, no? The the I yeah. Isolation. 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 Isolation of the of the neighborhood, in a, in the good point of view. No? Um, um, and I and also this kind of uh, really strong connection with nature. It was it was really beautiful, and it's something that um, we is, we've been trying to to work with it with uh, with some some of our projects. Um, this is this is maybe one of um, a possible explanations of that project. This is um, student housing in San Cugat in the School of Architecture. And we did that project with Ache Arquitectas. 
um, uh, some of the, you, you already know that project, so I'm not going to uh, focus that much on the project. It's also a modular project um, built in, in a factory that also I'm not going to focus on that. Um, but basically, in, 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 this, in this lecture, it's important the project for, for, the, for the environment that we created in the inside. No? The idea was to create um, kind of a, a, a huge patio, a huge Mediterranean patio. Uh, that was kind of an extension of the living spaces of all the different units of the students. No? Um, this is a picture just finished uh, the construction with all the plants uh, just with all the vegetation just plant and and this is how now it looks like. Um, This was the first attempt of the office of creating this kind of intermediate space and not in, in this case, not energetical, uh, but yes, on terms of um, uh, kind of the transition of the, from the public space to the private space. A space that it's um, all, only used by the, the people that live in the building and that because there is a strong uh, transparency in the units um, the exterior becomes also part of the interior even though the vegetation also have a, a, a rule of um, um, bringing privacy in in the units This is a this is a, a project in Mongat that we just uh, started the construction. Um, Thirty nine um, apartments. Um, it's a very old project. Uh, we won the competition in the 19, 2008, but because of the crisis, it got stopped. And it was just recently that we were able to restart the project and do the. And design the construction plans, and right now is on construction. Um, in this one, in this one, um, uh, we were able to change a little bit the project, and and, and focus um, and focus the project on on this idea of 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 um, reducing the the energetical demand of of the buildings. To, to almost zero, no? so to a, a, an in-zep building. So more or less, not only the intermediate spaces um, uh, will be, will be uh, energetical spaces to kind of um, be able to use in different um, condition, uh, climate conditions, but the, the building itself uh, doesn't need any kind of um, energy. So it's a, a energy zero uh, apartment. So uh, the, the the whole the whole the whole apartment becomes kind of a a, a climate refuge. You know? This is the view from the site, as you can see, it's a very impressive uh, location, uh, and it's kind of well oriented to be able to to manage in a in a really good way the the solar gains. Uh, we won the competition, um, so, um, kind of proposing these two blocks of buildings instead of only one, how it kind of more or less was planned, um, to be able to manage this kind of very complicated uh, topography. Uh, like we have around uh, 17 meters of difference between the two streets. So it's a very, it's a very, uh, it's a very tough uh, situation, as you can see. Um, the the slope is is very is very important, um, and because and also we have a kind of a, a complicated ge geological conditions. Um, we we are we are lucky because we have a rock. Even this rock is 
half broken, but but um, uh, Ayuna falla. Um, but what we try to optimize as maximum as possible the the structural strategy to to make it to make it uh, economically um, factible. As you can see in the section, and now I'm going to explain it. The two the two buildings mainly uh, uh, they are mainly oriented to to the sea and to this kind of east east south south east south uh, with this kind of um, galleria that cover the the completely the 100% of the front uh, of the facade of the of each apartment. Um, The apartments are the, the the one on the, the building on top. Uh, we have this uh, corridor, even though we were able to create a, a, a ventilation in, inside the corridor. So we we have a kind of uh, cross ventilation. We have this kind of huge galleries in front of each apartment, um, and the and the lower building has this um, passarella, this corridor on the back side and and they have this kind of intermediate space but is the out it's it's an exterior intermediate space but that allowed some privacy between between the the glass and and the corridor and this you have this amazing kind of uh, cross ventilation in the apartment um, from one side to another um, always run uh, at the end with this control of the of the galleria as you can see and the, the energy demand is is a it's almost it's almost zero this is kind of the it's not it, this is not that usual in in housing projects in in spain even though uh, we there are some 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 other projects by, by some colleagues that are not, right now they are doing the same because we, we, because it's what what we it's what is necessary. And in this project we we focus we focus the, the envelope on, on working with um, light uh, ceramic uh, uh, or ceramic I don't know how it's called a uh, thermorphia. Um, with with this insulation on the outside um, on the on the mainly on all the facades unless no or menos no como sería menos la fasana except for except for the the facade the facade of the thermorphy um, the facade of the gallery and that we were able to not use insulation and the insulation, more or less insulation, or the active insulation, is the the air of the gallery itself. So, so here we focus 100% uh, on on mass, on inertia, and the insulation uh, becomes uh, the air itself of the gallery uh, that is run um, by the by the user. I don't know. Well, I guess I guess you understood it. Eh? Uh, I guess it was uh, clear what I was saying. Here we on on the section which we can see this kind of uh, cross ventilation or cross situation of of the of the apartment, and this is a, a very basic uh, render that express this kind of um, transparency between that um, corridor uh, to the galleria. And this is this intermediate space uh, between the apartment and the, and the corridor. And this is that that view of of the building um, on the lower part with this kind of uh, long galleries that are covered with with this kind of um, fabric glass that are being used usually in this kind of um, kind of uh, extensions of restaurants in front of the sea and this kind of stuff, and they are all replegables. And on the side facade, we can see which part of the facade is um, covered by the insulation and which kind of uh, the part of the facade 
because, because it's not part of the um, heated envelope of the building. Uh, so the Galleria doesn't need that, that insulation and we expose the, the thermophilia itself. I'm sorry because it's, it's all going to be a little bit technical, but it's what it is. Eh? <laughs> um, this next project is Escolapi Cancer by Patronat. Um, it's um, in Torre Baró. Um, um, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, is this kind of neighborhood that is being built on the um, on the foot on the feet of the of Torre Baró next to next to the next to the highway? Um, that it's not really it's not a really interesting. Uh, I, I, in my opinion, it's not a really interesting um, uh, neighborhood, but. But there was this opportunity of do, doing this kind of um, housing project here, and we we try to relate a little bit with the way of uh, people living in Torrevado, because probably what some of these people that live in these informal houses, some of them are gonna go to live to this building and. And, and we wanted to engage a little bit uh, with with um, with this kind of wild way uh, of them and the way they live. No, they really live in a strong relationship with nature, with the environment, um, and 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 some of them they accept the these kind of tough conditions of the slope of the of the cold. Of the bad, um, some of them with bad uh, orientations, um, and and we we thought that it was and that that is kind of a that is it's it, it's kind of a, that they do it because they they mm, some of them they really like it to live in this kind of uh, situation. So so if they are forced to to move to an apartment, we wanted to try to at least keep a little bit of what of this kind of um, way of living a little bit related to the exterior so we try to propose with a with a very kind of a pragmatic uh, way of this kind of um, project that we are uh, used to 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 do no? in social in social housing and to propose this kind of um, building that accept the the shape of the of the lot and place uh, in different heights, um, these kind of um, apartments that that were kind of that were able to be used almost like single houses with these uh, exterior spaces that some of them were even um, the the um, the space where you can enter the house. So a little bit, a little bit, you were living in an in a in an in a apartment um, block, but but more or less it would feel like like living in a in a single house with a with a with a exterior space um, on it. This is uh, the the lot is it's it's kind of complicated. It was very difficult to fit here. Um, Kind of a, a rational, regular building. So at, at the end, we accept this kind of uh, irregularity as a as a condition of a project. So we 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 designed it this this donut. We uh, I, I forgot to say that we did this project in collaboration with uh, with uh, Maida and and Julian Ramon. And this is how it looks a little bit. It's kind of interesting how the, the, that weird shape a little bit relates with, with the mountain and, and the nature. And this is how um, in, in the competition, we just proposed this kind of layout with these terraces. 
the dual exterior, but on the on 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 the process of of designing and the building, we we sorry no we didn't propose terraces we proposed this a uh, 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 in greenhouses related to the these apartments but on on the on the construction phase we also were able to propose this atrium in, in the center and with that we were able to to lower um, a lot uh, the energetical demand uh, of the different of the different uh, of the different apartments um looking always with this kind of uh, zero energy building to to allow um, to 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 help people no? to be able to live without having this kind of uh, energetical expenses this is a view of this interior atrium that is um, managed by by this greenhouse on the on the roof and this is very very uh, very interesting space uh, that we try to design it in the in a acoustic in acoustic way but it's also the space that we use to ventilate uh, the apartment so we minimize a lot uh, the the energetical uh, demand because that place is already run by 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 the the this atrium so, so we always exchange or we always ventilate with with the good um, uh, with uh, temperate air. This is more or less the layout uh, with this kind of four apartments uh, for each uh, core. This is um, the structure that is also kind of uh, interesting because it's more or less it works together with this idea of these single houses so we don't have um, we don't have um, the typical um, um, frame structure or reticula uh, with with columns we have kind of pantallas uh, concrete walls that separate the apartments between each other Um, the, the, the layout of the apartment is very basic. We have windows in both um, um, facades, the interior and the exterior. Sorry. And then, sorry. And then in this kind of um, terrace, patio, uh, exterior space is also designed with uh, kind of this steel, steel, um, Carpinteria, still the fusteria, um, that is not sealed, but allows uh, this space to be half ventilated, but at the same time to control the solar gains. Um, so sometimes it's going to be open, sometimes it's going to be closed, uh, depending how the the users want to use it. This is how more or less it looks like from from the elevator and that's how we do looks from the interior of the apartment we we intentionally design it uh, with a this material like this discontinuity material discontinuity inside and outside to make it clear there is uh, an outdoor space that could be managed to become a half interior space but it's never it's it's never going to be part of the interior um, it, it's only it has to be uh, kind of it's it's clearly a greenhouse uh, space This is, a, this is a small project, 20, 20 apartment building. It's, a, it's our first uh, private project that we've done here um, at the office. Um, it's now in construction, it's almost finished. Um, it's in San Pere de Rivas. Uh, it's inside the uh, 
and uh, a kind of interesting um, old uh, city center. Um, it's in this corner. Um, it has some beautiful views to the to the church and to the south, a good orientation to south, even though now they're going to start uh, building just in front of it. Um, and, and, and we wanted to relate a little bit with this kind of typical construction in, in, in San Pedro de Rivas. As you can see, the use of porch is, is very typical or usual. Um, and the, obviously, the main, the, 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 all the traditional construction is, is a very well construction. Um, and, and we wanted to kind of in, try to import that to, to our building. So, um, so, so we proposed to the client to work also with uh, very, this, um, a very low um, technique, uh, structural technique. So just do the project only with a uh, brain wall, um, with using brain wall construction. Um, and that was what was uh, kind of that was uh, our intention of also kind of trying to engage or relate to to the to the old city hall, no? and yet just using the same the same technical construction. And by that, probably that would um, offer kind of introduce us or or make us kind of um, generate a, an image that would also um, kind of relate with, with the vernacular construction um, that we have in, in San Pedro River. Um, we also try to make this kind of uh, um, uh, horizontal structure a little bit much, um, a little bit more tectonic, not just flat. Um, and this is more or less the layout of the building. We try to also solve that corner. Uh, with um, dividing the building in two parts um, to make it more and to optimize a little bit more the apartments, even though one core is used for the second or the small building. And more or less, we have uh, no, here three apartments or sometimes four apartments for each for that core. And in, in this one, we have uh, three apartments or sometimes six for each core because in section on the, the lower or the last uh, floor we have a duplex the the the, the fact that we were using uh, very wall construction and that we wanted to introduce this kind of uh, port spaces um, made us decide to to, to design uh, and to introduce uh, the arch in, in our facade. No? Um, the arches represent uh, or they, they construct these uh, exterior spaces um, using bearing wall um, techniques. No? So everything works in compression. When we have a, a, a room, a dormitory, and when we have a room, it's a, it's a normal window, no? uh, but when we have an exterior space, a porch, um, it, it's designed um, yeah, using uh, the arch. And some of these arches also allow um, the low apartments to get into the apartment directly from the street that we also thought that was kind of a nice detail uh, nice things that you can see also in this in these kind of old towns, and we wanted to recuperate that also in that in that project. These are the very walls. This is the the roof technique using this. Um, Bigger tablon, and um, so these kind of uh, beams that look 
and they had kind of the shape of a, a wood a wood uh, beam, but they are done in, in concrete. Um, that they bring that kind of uh, tectonic, more tectonic space. Uh, and this is kind of the, 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 the main typology of, of, of one apartment and with this living space um, this kitchen open to the living space, this kind of um, multi-purpose room that can be part of the living space or it can become a room and that allows this kind of cross ventilation and this kind of ports that could, well, sometimes it's going to be part of this kind of uh, long living space and sometimes it's going to be uh, isolated because it's too cold. Right? And then these two other rooms that are more like typical eh? and with this kind of um, very private demand that is usually to have two bathrooms instead of one. And, and this is uh, the, an, uh, an example of a porch. That one is in the corner, so it's a little bit more sexy than the others. And this is still, well, as you can see, these are our own pictures. They are not done by a photographer, so we're still um, finishing the building. But this is more or less how it looks. This, this kind of um, fences can be open or can be completely operable. Or so they can disappear if the client wants. Um, they can look like the one on top, or it can be completely closed and then kind of leave for the weekend. But he can enter the house also uh, using um, by this um, by this uh, from the street. This project is also in collaboration with Patronat, with uh, Nat, with Josep Ramon, Monica and Maida. It's, uh, it's a big building um, in, a, in, a, in a difficult, um, in a difficult uh, place with this kind of new urbanism that is a little bit it's complicated um, and, and we, we focus a lot on, on the building itself and the building itself, not, not really on the context. We were um, interested on, on and continue working with kind of a series of rooms uh, um, and then but, but for the scale of the building um, we we knew that probably was not um, uh, reasonable to propose a building wall uh, construction. So we tried to combine this idea of series of rooms with this kind of, uh, with a very kind of um, um, typical um, frame concrete structure. So that means with concrete pillars, columns, and kind of exposed. So um, the, 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 the layout become this kind of um, cross uh, that, uh, that, um, that tries to, tries to um, use some of the things that I've been explaining. No? Um, this is the drawing by the competition. We, we were able to to solve the, the apartment um, entering also from the outside. So we have a terrace uh, related to the, to the elevator and to the stairs. So we get to the apartment from the outside. That's something that we like a lot, um, but it's not a corridor, so it's completely private. Um, so we can imagine that a lot of things are gonna happen in these spaces, no? Like, bicycles, 
plants, some chairs, um, uh, storage stuff, and I, very, I think this space is going to be very interesting. Then we enter the apartment through the, this kind of huge kitchen, but doesn't have the, the shape of a kitchen because it, the shape is, is a room, like it is the living or like it's the dining. And then from that, uh, sorry, from that dining room, you can get to the, to the rooms. Uh, and then from the living, you can get to the uh, more kind of uh, private um, terrace that on the process of the project, uh, we were able to create here uh, uh, kind of a gallery. A uh, galleria, no, a greenhouse space, uh, uh, energetical intermediate space, with some patronal contradictions, because they don't want these spaces to be that big. So we had to more or less try to um, manage this contradiction of the, being a space that is. Uh, consider like inside a space, so it counts 100% square meters. It had, it had it counts like like an interior, but that it works as a as a intermediate space. That's why it has um, two layers of 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 glass, and the user can uh, manage these two layers the way the way they want it. That allows us, um, this is a, this is, this is um, kind of an energetical uh, um, explanation of um, the gains and the uh, losses, las perdidas, um, of, of, the, of each layout, no, of each um, um, typology. And on the top, we see the kind of the legal um, condition. And the lower part, we see um, the bioclimatic condition. So the lower part is how it, you, how it has to work or how it's supposed to, to work. No? And, and uh, the, on top, we can see the way we are able to make it um, possible, so legal, but how we don't want it to work, no? Because as you can see, uh, we have a lot of gains in summer. Is it all these kind of uh, orange that we have in the middle part of the graphic? I don't know if I move that, this part. Eh? This is one that all this is what we lose. Eh? All these gains that we don't want in the summer, we lose having this in a space uh, exterior in summer. But in winter is interior, so we get all these gains that are on favor on lowering a lot the energetical demand of the apartments. In terms of ventilation, we minimize a lot of energetical um, perdidas, loss, lose, losses, 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 losses. Uh, by exchanging the living space always uh, exchanging air uh, with the gallery uh, with the galleria instead of with the outside here we see kind of um, the uh, uh, energetical potentiality of these cassettes when they become galerias um, in, in, in winter, uh, all this energy becomes, uh, becomes um, energy that the that, 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 that apartment can capture in a passive way and put it inside the apartment. This is... Um, uh, in Seoul, um, 
en el Parliament Project, Housing Project that we, we won recently, and we had to do it kind of fast. Um, and and in in that case, it, it's it's an interesting project because it's, it has just from the more architectural point of view, it's it's a square. It's kind of a sh short tower, and and we like we like a lot this kind of um, a problem of solving that 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 square itself. Um, from the side point of view, it's um, interesting because it's at the end of uh, another kind of complicated urbanistic uh, growth of the city um, with too much, too many buildings, but it's at the end of it and a little bit related to, to Coixarola. Um, and sorry, and also related to an interior a kind of patio with another two buildings. Um, the idea was to create this kind of a uh, huge terrace that would allow kind of um, the apartment to to relate with the exterior, to relate to this kind of coisalola nature and to this um, interior garden nature. Um, um, to allow uh, multi-purpose, multi-circulations multi in between, between the interior and the exterior. And the, the layout allows uh, almost the, the, all the apartments to, 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 to have this kind of diagonal no? and to get this kind of um, expansion from the outside through the terrace and on the corner. We also try to not design. Well, we we try to not design um, a, a typical structure. We we wanted to solve everything in concrete, um, and that the structure was also um, the space, and that's why uh, we we solve the structure with bearing wall and. With bearing walls in concrete, and and just solving the cantilever with this column, is, that are the only columns that are exist in the building in the in the corner. So we have this kind of a concrete wall in in the center, and then just the facade as bearing elements. This is this diagonal that I was talking about between the entry, the, 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 the dining, living, and then the terrace. This is the long terrace itself. This kind of balcony is in relationship to these gardens. And these are kind of different um, diagrams um, of how the, the typolis can be can be kind of um, designed to adapt to different uh, family structures because everything in the inside the apartment is it's not structural. So we will be able to fit here different um, families with different um, uh, structures and also this idea of um, kind of um, designing in a different way, you know, always by the users, the rule of the kitchen, the rule of the position of the dining inside the house um, area. And also what I was talking about, this kind of um, multiple um, circulation between inside and outside. Yeah? This is the street facade. In this case, uh, we try to use um, uh, toldos. I don't know how to say that in English. Um, ownings. Ownings, exactly. Ownings. And fabric ownings. Fabric ownings. Um, 
on 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 all the facades to create to to be able to to make sure that this exterior space would be on 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 comfort on on summer no? and we are able to enter the apartment through the 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 apartment the the, the parking the parking level so we don't have a lobby on the ground floor, so that way all the apartments relate to the garden. That's how we enter to the building. And then we get to this kind of uh, interior atrium that and in the same way as uh, some of the other projects that I already explained, it works like a um, energetical LNN to allow the ventil like to allow the, the, the ventilation, but also um, to manage all this kind of intermediate space in the winter to um, to um, be able to exchange air, not uh, the apartments, not with the facade, but with the atrium, and that way minimize a lot the losses. And this is uh, uh, some proof to be able to know which kind of temperature we would get in this atrium. In the summer, this temperature would allow us to create a, a stronger um, venturi effect. And on winter, it allow us to minimize the losses as you can see here. And then we also um, solve it um, because when you work in a st concrete structure um, and we have continuity of the concrete slab between inside and outside, we also had to, to find a, a way of solving the, the thermal bridge. And this is more or less how it looks like. This is uh, a, a recent project. We don't know if it's going to be built or not. We just finished the construction plans. It's uh, a 40 apartment, uh, 40 apartment project. Um, it's, it's a private commission. Um, <laughs> it's in Papiol. Um, um, it's in uh, part of Papiol, uh, this one, um, kind of at the edge of the of town, um, with a strong views. It was a family plot uh, with only with only one house uh, of a, a big family and they wanted to develop uh, that that block and that lot um, and uh, by by the urbanistic code um, we were only allowed and we had, we had to follow kind of this this um, this uh, situation no? uh, um, and we were we had to do kind of a maximum 30 meters uh, blocks and and we following this kind of distance between them we thought that this kind of typology of blocks was not really appropriate for for that site because it's a little bit surrounded by uh, single single families uh, single houses um, and detached houses uh, so we we, we, we propose to, to break and these, these huge blocks in, in two. Uh, we had to optimize uh, the project at the same time. So even though we were breaking the blocks, we were keeping the, um, and the block 
to run it only my only one core. And, and, and that's why the Bonnet Castellana picture was at the beginning. No? So the idea was um, to focus a little bit this project on the, on the intemperie, on the outdoors, um, creating this kind of um, situation that um, the exterior garden would be kind of the most important thing of the project and, um, and thinking about how, how how people would live these 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 apartments or these these buildings. No? The idea was having all these buildings in really exterior, really related to the garden itself, to the community. So we we proposed that um, all the all the ground floor would be um, only pedestrian, no cars. The cars would be underground we enter directly from the street and we design it um, in a very rough way all the community spaces like we were kind of doing like this kind of um, beach beach usually apartments no that usually the, stair the staircases are exterior and, and these kind of things no to to kind of always to uh, mix all the outside space kind of uh, as a part of the of the whole garden even though that we broke this uh, these blocks we had to keep this distance and then code distance between them and then how that's how we got this kind of aggregation um, that for us was a little bit more compatible with the uh, existing fabric of the surroundings. This is a view of how this in interior garden would look like um, with all these kind of uh, pedestrian layouts that allow you um, to enter with the old kind of the original enter, pedestrian enter, you can get to this garden and move around and get to your apartments by, by foot. Or if you arrive to your own house by car, you enter by another door um, on the ground. And each block, it's thought um, that way, in a, in, a thermical, in a thermical climate spaces. No? So we have the rooms, we have the livings, and then we have the intermediate spaces and then we have the exterior spaces. So each, each apartment has uh, two balconies, one galleria, no? um, and then three rooms. And the path to get to uh, each apartment is always exterior. We decided to do that in really low techniques. Uh, so the idea was to, the, all these apartments are very exterior, so they, they have a lot of facade, so we knew that that would be expensive. So then the decision was to do everything very rough and very basic and very simple, There's low technology, to be able to pay this, the value of having a lot of, a lot of facade. This is how an apartment would look, always with kind of these um, exterior views in between the inside blocks that are the, the, the structure of the building, the rooms. This is only one apartment. Yeah? And this is all the work that we did um, to be able to to even though these buildings were very exterior and had a lot of facade, even though uh, that and uh, to minimize as maximum as possible the um, the energy demand on, on winter. Because as you can see on the blue uh, row, uh, there's almost there's no demand on, on summer uh, because this uh, very good ventilation that the apartment has. 
we faced uh, all the windows on the right orientation. We move a little bit the blocks to make that possible. Uh, we try to combine that also with the views to the garden, etc. Yeah. So everything could not be 100% orientation because also the buildings we thought had to face the garden. The good thing is that each each apartment has three views, so that always that always compensate and that make that uh, asegura makes sure that there's always sun going inside and uh, going inside each apartment at least a few hours of the day. And this is all, all the work that we did in putting in together um, in relationship cost and energy. But, Sorry, this is not working. Hmm. We, we test a lot of uh, facade solutions in terms of a thermal bridge, cost, and insulation, and to be able to, to at the end, um, being able to pay the, pay the construction, but at the same time, um, uh, minimize the energetic demand. This is more or less how it looks, the project. It's in Termorcilla and some insulation on the outside, only on the exterior uh, and uh, walls. And then this drawing explains a little bit where we cut the pieces and the kind of different elements that we have. The ceiling, the ceiling um, plans explain recently very well uh, our projects and uh, how we understand can, this kind of uh, fluid space that is the living in between this kind of um, structural blocks that are the rooms. And this would be this elevation of, of one piece of facade, no? this bearing wall, Termorcilla, uh, and that's how it would look when it's finished. This is one of these blocks in relationship to the garden. This is kind of this exterior um, approximation. No? This is going through to get the, 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 the elevator. This is when we leave the elevator and we get to um, these two apartments. And this is how it looks a little bit one apartment when we get in. And we're still missing another, bit, another window on the left side, on the right side. Um, and this is the Mallorca project, so I'm um, almost finished. Um, this is the one that we are um, right now finishing the construction plans. Um, this is this has been a, a very um, interesting project. Um, we we were very lucky. To, to to be the winners of, of that of that project with a very uh, special uh, special site um, it's placed on Palma and it's in front of this kind of uh, old old factory um, built on Mares on this uh, typical Mallorca or La Silla stone um, and the fabric looks like way and and for for us was was um, the factory was kind of a a tectonic inspiration to to think about about the project so we we de, we decided to do the project in in very well construction and in that case um, um, stone construction 
you can see in these diagrams, the first, uh, the first step was um, this, uh, this kind of wall, wall structure that would define uh, the, the space. Then um, los muros de traba, I don't know how, how you say that in English, um, that are also necessary in a very wall structure that would create all the, all the different rooms to, to start kind of the program layout. But for us was uh, that, that, that reticula was not enough. Uh, we wanted to really kind of uh, solve these apartments with a low zero, um, uh, with a zero energy, uh, zero, zero energy building. So we wanted to introduce these um, galerias as a transition spaces uh, on the facade, on the street facade, and on the interior facade. Uh, in this case, uh, we wanted to create this like one hundred percent galerias. So, so it's the only project that we've done with two closed galerias. So that uh, galeria on the corridor. It's not an outside space that allows kind of some um, privacy and stuff, but it also helps on the energetical um, um, behavior of the of the apartment. The last step, the last steps, is just placing the staircase and the different typologies that were asked on the competition. This is how we look on the competition the ground floor we also solved the two small corners and um, not proposing housing um, apartments there so they were just uh, entries collective entries to the apartments or or entries to the uh, to the parking so this is kind of pe um, pedestrian entry here and pedestrian entry here so and that would, uh, was helping us with uh, with the geometry, not introducing introducing complexity to the geometry, and and this is the proposal of the typologies, very simple, uh, a well known typology. We were not inventing anything. We were introducing this condition of two galleries that was something new for us. Also the condition of this gallery um, having a connection to the living and to the rooms uh, to bring all these uh, solar gains in, in both spaces. And then by that, and also by these uh, uh, more regular uh, entries to the rooms, allowing um, very different kind of layouts by the users and the way they would use the spaces as typical rooms or as offices with uh, exterior connection um, and so on and so on. This is how it looks the inside with this kind of transitional rooms from the corridor to, to the street um, with the proposal of this um, structure in wood to minimize the, the CO2 on the construction. That was also a demand of the competition. And this is that energy behavior that I already explained. This was the proposal, the tectonic proposal on, on the competition. The idea was to use the stone on the outside in terms of durability and to use um, earth on the inside in terms of CO2. And then um, wood construction for windows and for the horizontal slab. And this is the proposal of the competition. On, on the process of de developing this, um, this competition, we got to the basic stage with, uh, with this work of 
mm, mejoras, ¿no? Improve in all these improves to the, to the scheme um, to be able to minimize um, almost uh, uh, 70% the energy uh, demand. And I cannot see the right side, but I think the potentiality is almost um, 80%. And that this is what we are working right now on it. Um, so, what has changed from the competition to the to the project that we are finishing right now? Uh, what has changed has to do a lot with uh, different things. No, one with uh, um, with Carla Zulive. Carla Zulive is uh, an architect it's a, a well-known architect and but and a very good architect but he's also the responsible of running ibadi that is um, the public um, the public state the public commissioner of of the the, the of, of of responsible of building social housing in, in las baleares no uh, so is uh, the person that we are in, that we are always in relationship to, with him and debating all the and the architectonical approach. And he's been influencing um, um, the direction of how the building um, has to has to go. No? Uh, in in my opinion, in a in a very interesting in a very interesting way, no? he he proposed he proposed us um, an opportunity. He proposed us that uh, that project would be the biggest project built in Mares um, uh, for uh, for housing building in 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 Las Baleares. And to use that as a as a, as a research, um, and to use us also as a research to be able to create a new a kind of a new vernacular um, situation, no? and to be able to to create a system that could that would be able to be um, um, repeated, um, and he asked us also to relate with the vernacular architecture. So to kind of um, recollect or to focus on what exists and to make it, to recollect it uh, and to make it, um, uh, to make it uh, able to kind of be um, repeated in our time. And we accept these conditions and we accept also the consequences of some kind of changes that the project would suffer because of that. Um, obviously, the project gets affected also um, by the materiality, no? by the material that uh, has to be used. And in relationship to that, we uh, with also with the help of Carla Solide, we selected um, a Mares that would be um, kind of very strong, that would allow us to, to make the, um, would allow us to kind of define and uh, the walls very, very thin, uh, um, um, a compost walls with two layers that would help a lot um, the construction of the building, because one of the problems of building in Maris is the is the um, the load, and the heaviness of the pieces that are very heavy to be carried by by two people, by two workers, um, because usually they they need a chain, they need a, a grua to be able to move all these pieces, and that makes the the construction very expensive. Um, because of what we propose on the competition with this kind of um, compost walls with two layers, 
and we would be able to build in Mares, but with light pieces that would be able to be used and moved by two only two uh, 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 workers, and that would help probably probably will help um, the construction of Mares being um, more um, kind of uh, factible in, in the future in Mallorca and therefore uh, being factible, being possible to have a um, kind of industry and technologies related to these um, techniques in Mallorca. That is one of the things that IBABI is very focused on, to create a local industry um, based on these local uh, techniques and materials. So these are this is a small change that the plan has um, suffered. They are almost, if I don't explain it, they are almost not visible. And I'm not going to really explain it because they are not that, that important. This is how the section looks like, this uh, corridor on the garden interior or, or garden facade. This is the street facade, the slope roof, the wood still there, the parking with the bolts in stone. Um, as you can see, we, we have this kind of very thin walls that are possible because this mares that is very strong these double walls that allow a little bit of insulation in between them in terms of acoustics and in terms of um, um, uh, temperature in insulation and also what i try to explain that 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 allow us um, a kind of a fast um, a fast construction um, we can see also that we keep uh, the idea of the project of having this kind of self-standing facade without having to use um, uh, steel connectors in between the two leaves. Um, the, the facade express the, the very well condition of the project, but also solve the self-standing uh, condition of the uh, exterior facade without having to cross uh, the insulation. And then we also uh, keep from the competition this um, frame uh, stone facade on the, on the garden, uh, similar to this kind of frame structure um, that Hudson uh, designed for his own house in Candis. This is the roof, the roof plan with this kind of uh, prefabricated uh, uh, wood slabs that can also accelerate uh, a lot the construction phase. And with all these funchos that I don't know how to say it in English, that are in concrete, but they are prefabricated. So that also would accelerate the construction process. And make it more compatible with the prefabrication of the of the wood uh, slabs. So this is materials, horizontal structure, vertical structure side facades and this is our first experience with with um, in, with stone projects so so all the pieces has to be designed all the pieces they they work um, structurally so they need to follow some rules so a facade that 
is also structural, so it has also to follow rules. So we have the, always these drawings of how it looks and how it's built. And then how we solve the self-standing uh, um, con structural condition of each leaf. And this is the kind of vernacular metamorphosis <laughs> um, dot Carlos Oliver project. <laughs> um, and that's it. And with this, I'm done. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Claudie. Um, I'm sorry, I will have to leave uh, right now, but um, uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I hope, uh, Pedro, can you take over? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was really interesting. And uh, now we are beginning to open uh, the questions. So if someone has a question, I want to, to tell you a comment, okay? And I would like that uh, just to open this, uh, these questions. Uh, because I see many of your projects, uh, you play with symmetry, okay? And uh, of course, you are always talking about uh, sustainability uh, and all this um, isolation, uh, uh, taking advantage about uh, all these kind of things. So many times, okay, the uses of symmetry uh, can be a problem with, with all these kind of, of, of visions about ecology and, and energetic solutions. Of course, you take advantage many times about uh, to do atrios and, and, and all this kind of crossing ventilation in order to engage this because many, many times, okay, the, the architects, when they are just thinking about uh, thermical things, ecological things, etc., they forget many times, okay, uh, the, the final aspect of, of the building. And I have the feeling that in your case is a really, really uh, important, no? the, the aspect of the building. You are taking care about all, all the details, uh, what the, the aspects, the materials that you use, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I want to ask you uh, just uh, what about these fighting conditions, okay, about orientation, uh, uh, the logic of the plan, the logic of the, of the structure, the logic of the construction and the logic of the aspect of your buildings and how do you manage all these all these things yeah it's a, it's a good question it's um, es cabron zeta la pregunta it is true that um, geometry geometry is important for us we don't have a we don't really have a um, um, commercial a prejudice on yeah. on 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 trying to make buildings iso isotrop, no isotrop, so mm -hmm. really symmetrical. But it's true, and I can see it right now here on the screen that there are a lot of um, isotropies and a lot of symmetries. Uh, and I think I think you already uh, you already introduce kind of a an answer to, to your question by, by your, your analysis of our work. And I think it's true that, that um, we, we, for us, geometry is important. Um, sometimes it's true that uh, orientation is not the main, the main thing to be able to, uh, the orientation is not the main thing to decide how the building has to be. Uh, because we think that context is complex. Uh, so I think um, we learn to be critical to kind of the group use approach of simplifying too much uh, urban fabric and, 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 and how to design the neighborhoods, uh, etc., only based on uh, orientation. For example, like Chambla, is a good example of that, of, of how interesting is La Chambla, uh, but how complex and complicated it is in terms of orientation. And that's why 
um, as as you as you said it. That's why we try to um, add to our proposal always this kind of um, mainly two conditions to compensate orientation. Um, as you can say, the atrium sometimes compensate that because the atrium allows um, um, the the apartments that are not really facing uh, south and to get also um, an exchange uh, through the atrium uh, an exchange that is not bad no uh, because allows the the north orientations to exchange not with the north but with the atrium i think that's the you know i don't know if that's clear in english but um, I'm yeah, and then this second condition um, that is not only the cross ventilation, uh, but the non determinate uh, organization of the interior spaces. Mm -hmm. So that is not, it doesn't really affect whether kitchen, living, or, um, or dining places inside this um this main um main daily space because this daily space is connected always in both sizes so if in one side you have good orientation on the bad side you also have it because the air moves in the inside i don't know if i'm being yeah clear. yeah it's really clear thank you very much i i and think is, uh... no atrium cross ventilation, but at the same time, this cannot not fix program on the on this kind of daily space no? that goes from one side to another. Yeah. And also, of course, uh, I am totally agree with this. And also we, we cannot forget that also the, the to be uh, to to have a, a a main solution to all the units also means sustainability too. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's see some questions. There is a question, okay, uh, about this Yael, that is, uh, when we think of new sustainability dwellings, the material that pops up into our mind is wood because of the low carbon footprint. But I have, some, uh, but I have seen uh, that in some of your projects, you created very green buildings by using concrete. Could you please explain uh, how did you choose to use concrete structure instead of wood structure, for instance, in the project in Torrebaro? Ah, in Torrebaro, we did two construction plans, one in wood, uh, that when we finished, they didn't accept it. Uh, so we got to change to concrete. So we, we tried, we are trying, but they don't, they don't <laughs> like us. <laughs> we are trying. That in, in Torrebaro was amazing, was, was really, really painful because we, in, in Torrebaro was very interesting because the structure, we did it in concrete because the spans are very serious. Um, uh, and we thought that that structure that was not um, a frame structure, not with columns, would allow the facades not to be conventional facades. They, uh, built on with um, bricks, but we, we was a nice opportunity to make a light construction um, uh, and a light envelope and to create a, um, a wood, a light wood uh, structure for, for the facades. Um, and we designed all the building um, to make it possible with uh, prefabricated uh, wood panels. Um, because, because right now, um, wood structure, it's, it's getting like, it's, it's very difficult. It's, it's a little bit more expensive than the other structure. So instead of fighting in terms of cost with concrete on the structure, we thought, we thought that was easier to fight on the um, envelopes, on the facades. Uh, but, I don't know, and they didn't accept it with no technical reasons. It was a little bit uh, strange. And it is true that some of the projects that 
I explained here um, they use concrete, who, even though it's not a sustainable um, material, it's a, it's, a, it's a material that we, we appreciate and we like. Um, but at the same time, um, we are very practical. So some, in some of the projects, we think that uh, there's, there's, no, there's, it's, there's no space to fight in, in, some, in some things. But I didn't show some projects that we are doing right now. Some of them, they're still in the phase of con, on competition that they are on wood, they are actually in wood. Uh, and we are trying, we are really trying to introduce wood, structural wood, uh, structural wood construction in our projects. There are two questions about location. Sorry, Laia, because I, uh, before I uh, jam your, your question, but uh, because there are two that are related. Okay, Laia and one uh, spectator anonimo that they ask for exactly uh, two placements of your project. Uh, Laia asked, what is exactly the Mongat project? And there is another that, uh, Espectador Anonio, that asks if, ¿podrías enseñar otra vez el emplazamiento del proyecto del Papiol, por favor? So, uh... Sí. <laughs> Mira, Mongat. Mongat. Mira, Papiol. El proyecto de Papiol is here. And this is, is here. This is the yeah. road to get to the Papiol, here, to the center, here. And it's here, in this corner, very close to the highway. Um, and falta el de Mongat. Y Mongat es en, es in, es in so it's this new neighborhood that Imsol is building in Mongat, in, uh, I forgot the name. Manera um, Mongat, aquí. Tapunda Patasho. Um, in Mongat, uh, this is this is Mongat, yeah, the train, okay? This is the, the, the high school. This is the cemetery. This is the park. This is the new neighborhood that is being built with these huge buildings going down the slope. And our building is here, a little bit on top. So, okay, another question they here. said, in the case of the atrium, how do you avoid the draft on the ground floor? Because when, ventilate, when ventilating upwards, it creates a lot of current and on the ground floor and can create problems in the access doors uh, to those of the elevator. Uh, I don't prevent it, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ok. Eh, bueno, un, una mica. Um, for example. Well, it depends on right, the place that, that where is, because you cannot generalize that the atrium is a problem, no? Because if it's a windy place, it's in, in Ampurda, maybe you have a lot of problems with windies, but maybe okay. not in, in all the atriums you have these problems. In this, in this design, this is the entry door of the, of the building. And these are these kind of windows that are completely um, co operable, no? like on Grave Nerven, yeah? And they, they, with a very kind of uh, low economy, you're able to, to pay an engine to these windows. So during the summer, this opens by itself. And during the winter, it closes by itself. Only with that, you don't need an intelligent software. It's only on, off, winter, summer. And in my opinion, this would allow the, the wind to pass through the windows and not, uh, the, and not uh, 
disturbar no, uh, the door. I don't know if this is the answer to the question or not. But this is this could well, be uh, another question. Karine Bagzadayan asks, thanks for understand uh, for the understanding presentation. Question. So uh, some of the 2020 year projects that you have presented uh, and that are already finished. Do you think will be different from your future ones in terms of, of, of social distancing and COVID? How do you think the housing unit will change? Mm. In, in, in my opinion, um, everything that I've been work, uh, explaining, I think um, it's very comparable to COVID situation because we've been insisting a lot on these intermediate spaces and collective spaces inside the buildings that uh, would make these apartments um, easy to adapt to a kind of a confinamiento situations. Yes. Otra pregunta. Es importante and, para vosotros la forma. Uh, and, sorry. And also, uh, the confinamiento also. Uh, bring us to a situation that we start, we are more hours inside of our apartments. And everything that I've been explaining is to make the apartment um, easy to use in terms of energy. So, so if, if you have an apartment that can be managed, or, or significa que puedes gestionar ventanas, galerías, and you are in your apartment, uh, present, you are not at work, you are in your apartment, that makes the house um, very, uh, that makes that an opportunity to really uh, manage your envelope, manage your galleria to be able to not uh, expend any kind of energy in, in your apartment. Another question. Es importante para vosotros la forma geométrica de los proyectos que diseñan como lenguaje de expresión, como identidad única a pesar de usar la simetría en la mayoría de sus proyectos. Esa es la que pregunta si entiendo yo. Lo mateis que tú. Sí, es más o menos sí, la importancia exacta de nos da. da de, de la simetria i de, del control formal de, dels edificis. Bueno. Yes, it is. Do you want to, to add something? Because I think that, uh, that I was... I cannot imagine what you're doing. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know another way you're doing it. Like, it's, it's how... It's, it's how he do it. It's how we do it. It's how we understand it. Uh, maybe, maybe it's very geometrical, but it's, it's looking short. <laughs> Another question, uh, Mark uh, asks you, the Maris is a very good material, but too expensive material too. Perhaps a luxury material. Do you think that is a better material to build a social flat? Thank you. Mallorca project, entre parentheses. Um, well, uh, I think it's. I think uh, a lot of things make um, uh, Maris um, very interesting. Is to be a stone is not that expensive. That's why probably we will be able to build on on stone, and that's why some of um, some architects before us have been able to build on stone a, a housing a housing so, a social project. So. It is it is a it is more expensive than a, a than a hero, than a maon, than a brick, uh, but it's not more expen expensive than a brick with finishings in both sides. So if you don't spend uh, money on the finishings on on of the of the maris, is a little bit. Uh, comp uh, compatible, compatible, comp competitive. Sí, sí. Competitive. Uh, and has a lot, a lot of values. One is a stone. Another has a lot of inertia. Another is very local. Um, and the inertia is amazing. The inertia is amazing. 
Well, I think that's all. I don't see uh, more questions. So, well, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. We have learned a lot uh, about uh, housing energy and about your your uh, your your work. So, thank you very much for being here and to share with us uh, these two hours uh, of your time.